Hi everyone, in this video, I'll be walking you through the process of setting up an animation blueprint asset. Before I delve into the details of how we'll be accessing movement data from our character for use in our locomotion system. And more importantly than the how, I'll be doing my best to explain the why behind what I'm doing and how the engine systems that I'm interacting with work so that you can take what you learn from this video and apply it to any animation locomotion system that you create. Here I have a third person template project that contains the animations and assets from the unarmed upright strafing locomotion system on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. It was created by a friend of mine. It's a great asset pack and the link to it is in the description below. I've explained why it's a great fit for this series in the previous introductory video. I'd recommend you give that a watch if you have not already. I'll reiterate here that what I'm teaching in this video can be applied to any animation system using any animation assets, and that is true for most of what I'll be teaching in this series. I'm trying to cover the fundamentals and teach you how to build animation systems, not how to build an animation system with this specific animation pack. Though some of the things that I do teach and some of the uses for certain types of animations and how they can be incorporated, well, those animations may not be present in every pack and I can only guarantee that they're present in the pack that I am using. Anyway, let's get started. Now, inside of the level editor, if I press play and start moving around, you can see that the third person character rotates to face the direction of my movement input and that I can rotate my camera around the character. This works well for a forward facing locomotion system, but that isn't where we're starting with this series. Though I will be delving deep into the creation of a forward facing system and creating it as part of a unified forward facing and strafing locomotion system later on in the series, for the time being, we will start with strafing locomotion. So for now, I'm going to hard code the proper settings into the third person character blueprint and we'll expand it to be toggleable later on. I'll stop playing by hitting the escape key and press the control and spacebar buttons together to open the content drawer. I'll navigate to the third person character blueprint, open it up, and click into the class defaults icon to edit this class's default settings. I'll search use controller rotation yaw and I'm going to set that to true. Now, when I affect the yaw controller rotation by moving my mouse from side to side or doing the same with the right thumbstick on a gamepad, though it really just depends on how your own input is configured, though that is the standard, the character will rotate and the yaw of a rotator is the rotation around the up-down axis, which is what we're trying to align the rotation of our character with. Additionally, I'm going to click into the character movement component, and I am going to set orient rotation to movement to false, so that the movement component does not try to continue to rotate the character to face the direction of movement while the character itself is trying to rotate to align with the controller yaw rotation. Now, if I press play again and start moving around, you can see that the rotation is no longer tied to the movement and that I can control both separately. This is the desired behavior for a striping locomotion system. So without further ado, let's create an animation blueprint asset. I'll hit the escape key, open up the content drawer, and navigate into the Mannequin Characters Animation folder. I'll create an Animation Blueprint asset. I'm going to name it ABP underscore base, where ABP just stands for Animation Blueprint and is a commonly used naming convention. The Animation Blueprint has two graphs, an Events Graph where traditional Blueprint logic can be executed, and an Anim Graph where our animation states and logic are managed and executed. Before we begin building out our Anim Graph, which we will do in the next video, we need to provide our Animation Blueprint with information about our character's movement. When there are multiple characters running an Animation Blueprint together in a world, 
the animation blueprints event graph for each and every one of them needs to be evaluated sequentially and that can create a huge performance bottleneck. The Lyra example project released by Epic with Unreal Engine 5 presents a different, more efficient way of accessing the movement data that I'll be making use of for this series. To use this technique, we need to place our logic elsewhere in a function that runs on a separate thread. We can do so by accessing a function built into the anim instance class. Now this animation blueprint is a child of this class, which means it has access to all of the functions of the anim instance class and can override them with its own new logic if we desire. So I'll go over to the functions section of the my blueprint window, click into this drop down menu and select the function blueprint thread safe update animation. This function runs in a thread separate from the game thread and this function can be processed in parallel for multiple characters in the game world, removing the bottleneck and being much more efficient than using the event graph. However, there are some limitations on what we can do in this function because it isn't running on the game thread. One of those limitations being that we cannot access variables in the way that we normally would in other graphs. Because this function runs on a CPU thread separate from the game thread, we do not know what the game thread is doing with the variables and the data they contain when we access them on this thread, so we could encounter unexpected results. Unreal Engine has a system called Property Access, which will request the values of these variables when it is safe to do so automatically, meaning that we do not have to worry about any of this as long as we use the Property Access system to access the properties that we need. I'll right click into this functions graph and search property access and select the property access node. Here we can see this is what the property access node looks like. Right now its return type is undefined until we click into this drop down menu to select the value that we want to return. This node can access the variables we create inside of this blueprint as well as the variables and some of the functions inherited from this blueprint's parent class, the anim instance. As far as the functions go, Certain conditions need to be met, and I'll be explaining those later on in this video when I create a function that we will access through the property access node to set certain values. So, our current goal is to use this property access functionality to request character movement data from the character object containing the skeletal mesh that is using this animation blueprint. There are two major classes that we will be requesting this data from the actor class and the character movement component class within the character class. So to better explain why and how all of this works, I'm going to talk a bit about object oriented programming and inheritance. Object oriented programming is a concept in Unreal and many other game engines. And it's actually a concept ingrained deeply into C++ and one of the main things that separates it from the C programming language. And C++ is the programming language that Unreal is coded in. So objects at their core are a conceptual abstraction, a way for programmers to encapsulate functionality and data into a container. There aren't many limits on what an object can store and even better than allowing for conceptual organization and easy abstraction, objects exist within a hierarchy of inheritance. To explain what that is, I'll use an example. Pretend we have object one, which contains a function named A. And now we create object two in that it inherits or is a child of object one. Object two inherits function A and can call it. It also would inherit any variables that object one has. We can create a new function in object two that object two can call or new variables in object two. If we create object three, it will inherit everything that object two has. And this pattern continues down the line into increasing specificity. Unreal Engine is built and structured around object oriented programming. And there is a prominent hierarchy that you'll be interacting with quite often inside the engine. This hierarchy starts with the U object class, U being a prefix for Unreal. 
the A actor class, where A is just another prefix used for all actor or actor inherited classes, starting with A actor, inherits from U object, and is the first class that can be placed within the 3D game world. And as a result of this, it has certain variables that we can access and make use of, such as its location in the world and its rotation in the world. Now, the A pawn class inherits from the A actor class and is the first to implement controllable functionality. However, the A character class inherits from A pawn and is what we are using in this series as it implements a character movement component which handles the movement code for us. This character movement component also inherits from the U object class, but from a different branch in that pathway. And it has access to values that the character class isn't aware of, such as the acceleration that's being applied to the character to move it. This means that we can access some values that we need from the actor class that our character inherits from, and others we'll need to specifically access from the character movement component. Now, this is important to understand because every function in Unreal has a static, unchanging return type. A built-in function of the anim instance class, getOwningActor always returns an object of the type actor, even if the owner is further down in a chain of inheritance. This is because all characters, for example, are actors, but not all actors are characters. This anim instance has the function built in to get the actor that owns it, and it doesn't have to worry about, well, what about having a function for a character or any other class down that chain because they can all be treated as an actor in many scenarios. Because we need access to some more specific data, we will need to create a function of our own to access the character movement component's movement data. I'll click the plus button over in the function section of the My Blueprint tab to create a new function. I'll name it Get Character Movement. And inside of it, I'll use the property access node to call the function try get pawn owner. This returns an object of the type pawn if the owning actor of the anim instance is a pawn. Otherwise, it'll return null. So it's very similar to the get owning actor, but because the owning actor might not always be a pawn, it is named try get pawn owner and not get pawn owner and is a more specific function that gets us closer to the data that we need. Instead of calling this function, I can actually go multiple steps deep inside of a property access node and use the return value of try get pawn owner to call another function, a function that's part of the pawn class called get movement component. So now we have a property access node that returns a movement component class if the owning actor is a pawn the character movement component class inherits directly from the movement component class and contains the more specific data that we need. So given this class, which is higher up in a chain, we need to have Unreal Engine test if this movement component is more specifically a character movement component. And then to give us that character movement component to access data from if that test returns a positive. There's a node that can do this for us called cast. I will drag out from the return value of this property access node and I will type cast to character movement component. I will select the proper node and wire it up with the execution pin of the starting node of this function. Now, this node has three outputs, two execution pins, one for a success, one for a failure, and a return value, which will either return a character movement component object or null. I'll drag off from the top execution pin of this cast node and create a return node for this function. I'll drag off this cast node's return value and plug it into that node. And now we have a function that returns an object of the character movement component class type. I'm going to go ahead and create another return node by copying and pasting this one, plugging it into the bottom execution pin, the failed one and not plugging in anything to its return value. So now our function will either return a character movement component if the animation blueprint is owned by a character class, or it'll return null if that condition isn't true. To access this function from property access, a few conditions need to be met. One is that the return value of the function needs to be named return value in Pascal case 
which is a convention where you capitalize the first letter in each word without any spaces and is used for naming variables and functions inside of Unreal Engine. Next, inside of this functions details panel, I'm also going to tell the engine that it is a pure function, which means in the case of Unreal Engine, that this function is not modifying any values that it is accessing. Pure functions can be placed onto graphs without needing to have an execution plugged into them as well. Now that these conditions are met, I'll go ahead and compile and save this animation blueprint and go back into our blueprint thread safe update animation functions graph. Wow, that is quite a mouthful. <laughs> First, I'll use property access to demonstrate accessing the character's location and rotation. Inside of the node we've left here already, I'll open up the drop down and I will call the get owning actor function. And from this function, I will access the world location variable and use it to set a new world location variable inside of this animation blueprint. I will get another property access node and do the same, but for the actor's world rotation and set a world rotation variable. I'm also going to get the acceleration, but this value is within the character movement component because in Unreal, a character's acceleration is applied to it to accelerate it and is not calculated from some sort of preset velocity. So it is a great marker for whether or not we are providing input or not to our character to move it. And in the next video, I'll be using this acceleration to determine whether or not there is or isn't that movement input and from that determination to switch between an idle state and a movement state in our animation graph. So I will call our new get character movement function and from it access the acceleration and you guessed it, create a variable inside of our animation blueprint and set it. Now, one last step before I end out this video, I'm going to select each of these groups of nodes and collapse them into a function by right clicking and choosing that option. I'll name the first get location data, the second get rotation data, and the third get acceleration data. Now I'm going to make sure that each of these functions in their default panel are set to thread safe. Otherwise we'll get a compilation error because as far as the engine sees it, we'd be trying to call functions that are not meant to be called in a non-game thread in a non-game thread. All right, finally, one last step. I'm going to organize these functions and variables into different categories within their details panel, um, named location data, rotation data, and acceleration data. That way, as we create more variables and functions, this my blueprint panel on the left side here doesn't get over cluttered and difficult to navigate. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I know it was long and we didn't get very far into creating a locomotion system, but I wanted to make sure that I laid out all of the underlying reasoning and intent and purpose behind how I'm going about accessing this data, because it's something we'll be doing quite often throughout this series. And now that I've hopefully explained it well here, I won't have to explain it each time we need to grab a value and you should understand it well enough to apply it in your own context separate from this series. And besides my brain works in a way where I need to know how everything works down to the smallest detail and that's how I tend to teach too. <laughs> anyway, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or in the discord server for the channel, which is linked in the description below. I'll answer them as quickly as I can or address them in a future video directly. With that said, I'll see you all in the next video. Until next time.